Can, can Corla, there comes a point where words fail me, Minister, and you're in an extremely difficult position. Let me say openly, it is totally unacceptable that Minister Donnelly is not here. That you have had to read out this speech, which is absolute an insult to the women of Ireland. And I go that strong in relation to what I'm reading. That somebody would write a speech and the minister would read out that I would ask all members of the House to support the government in its continued commitment to women's health. Women's health. I will try to remain calm in relation to this. This is the third motion in seven months. The government has accepted each motion. I'm not sure if the government is able to read or able to understand what these motions are asking for, maybe in different, somewhat nuanced way, that the new National Maternity Hospital is publicly owned, publicly operated, on a site owned by the state crystal clear. If you agree to that, then we need a speech that's dealing with that. Minister, I don't personalise it. I've seen you work extremely hard along with your colleague, Mary Butler, and I've paid tribute to you. On the, well, in this case, to read out the speech, there comes a point in a minister's life where you say, this is simply not acceptable. So our third motion, we have a choice here. It might be better if each of us stood in silence might for 10 minutes and when Sinn Féin do it and it might be a more effective way to get through to the government in relation to the democratic process because all of the doll unanimously is saying owned the National Maternity Hospital owned the site. Now for a minister not to show tonight and for a speech like that to be written in a week where we are focused on the tragic and unacceptable death of Aisling Murphy and in that context, to have statements in here on how unequal women have been treated in our society. And each and every deputy has spoken, and I want to stay away from politicising. It was in the context of the debate here in relation to inequality. And no later than today, we had the legislation in relation to access to records. And once again, the final emerge finally, slowly, and still not emerging from the patriarchy from the 52 Adoption Act that was closed and secretive to beginning to open up to a National Maternity Hospital that's on the card since 2008 with a KPG, a KPMG report, a 2013 announcement by Minister O'Reilly of the co-location. For a civil servant or somebody to write that and give us a lecture on the importance of co-location is insulting and unacceptable. This decision of co-location was accepted by everyone, all governments and all TDs from 2013 onwards. What is not accepted are the Byzantine Kafkaesque arrangements going on behind the scenes in relation to religious ethos. The nuns might be gone, but those doing their believing in their philosophy and Mary Aikenhead, and fair play to them. I have no problem with that as long as it's not being imposed on a public hospital. That's the difficulty. And so we go forward from 2013 when Minister O'Reilly announced it. And over that period up to today, we've had all sorts of suggestions, including that the nuns were gifting it to the people of Ireland, some gift. And then we had a 99-year lease, a 999-year ni lease, a 99-year lease, and now a 299-year lease. We talk about operating licences. We talk about St. Vincent's holding, the, the group, the health group, the holding group, the DIC. Byzantine doesn't cover it. So I'm going to try and stick with a simple message, Minister, because I know where your heart is, but I'd like to know where your views are in relation to this and who's actually going to stand up and make language mean something. A national maternity hospital has to be owned by the state for the men and women of Ireland and future generations full stop. There is no going back on that. We have had different, we've had four male ministers and that's fine, except we have different messages from each of them in turn. We've had Minister Harris, can't remember what Mr. O'Reilly, Minister O'Reilly said. Minister Harris said that we would have a public hospital 
on a site that was leased. Minister Varadkar, who was Minister for Health at the time, said we would have a public hospital on a public site. And instead of going forward on that, we then have Minister Donnelly, who can't be here tonight, tell us he's going to, he's given us reassurances. I don't want reassurances as a female TD. I'm sure my colleagues that are male don't want reassurances. We want a public hospital on public land. And if we go back to the gift from the nuns, let's make that a reality, shall we? Make it a reality. I'm looking at this period of time in women's lives, and I'm looking at the parallel efforts and deaths and suffering that led to the National Maternity Strategy that's now been boasted about here. The National Maternity Strategy came 100 years after the 1916 proclamation. And it was forced on the deaths and suffering of women. Port Leach, Port Yonkla, Savita, Halapanavar in my own city. Report after report highlighting the inadequacy of the maternity services throughout the country, notwithstanding the wonderful staff. Let's not do this. I'm not given out about staff. I'm given out about lack of resources, lack of commitment, um, and, and services run on a charity basis. And we look at all of that. What have we achieved? That we're here getting reassurances. That we're here, that out there, while we're in here, another secret deal is going to be negotiated. Notwithstanding the overwhelming demand from people in Ireland, as demonstrated by the people who protested in Dublin, by the constant representations that we get, by the fantastic work from Dr. Boylan, Marie O'Connor, and many, many others, an uplift who paid and or organised a senior counsel's opinion. Not a reference to it in this speech from whoever wrote it. I'd love to know, did the minister write it? And if he did, I'd like him to be in here to stand over it. What is the answer to the... See, it's, of course it's an opinion, and you can get other opinions. But I'd like to hear, did the department get other opinions in relation to this? Uplift Commission this on our behalf. And they point out in relation to CPO that there are possible obstacles, but that they can be overcome. And at the end of the day, really, they come down on the side of no obstacle. Uh, and it is quite possible under the Constitution to CPO the land if necessary. The only thing that I've ever heard from the Thornish uh, uh, Leo Varadkar in relation to this is that it would delay the project unnecessarily. Well, I stand here tonight and I ask all the other uh, TDs here to confirm that we don't mind a delay. We don't want a delay. A delay is unacceptable. But if that is the strongest reason that the Thornish that can come up with for not compulsory purchasing the site, then that's totally unacceptable. And I would say... a. Com uh, a I would say a CPO puts it up to the entities that are out there and they're word worthy of a, a, a mystery novel, really, at this stage, the amount of entities that are out there in relation to a, a public national maternity hospital. CPO is not necessary if they agree. Absolutely not necessary. And all we want is for the government of the day to listen to the overwhelming voices of people here in the, in the Dáil on behalf of the people of Ireland who say enough is enough. We've said it in other contexts this week. We've said it in terms of gender violence and domestic violence. We've said it in terms of fundamental right for access to records without hurdles, without various steps from a patriarchal society or management that think they know best. Minister, you know enough is enough. A national maternity hospital. I'm going to finish by saying the maternity strategy 2016 is more than halfway through. We only got an implementation plan published 
just before Christmas, consequent on pressure within the Dáil for a motion that I put and other people put in relation to the implementation of the strategy. So when we stand and talk about a strategy, one has to say, how has it been implemented? HICWA did a report in 2020 on it. They said it was slow progress or no progress, patchy progress. And the, um, no, they didn't know who they were reporting to. Nobody knew who they were reporting to. This is the strategy that we're crowing about in this speech. So, Conjura a curlim a couple fuckle, Tom a gohanagum, Tog Toshe Haram Bart Yen of Derer or Mriher, Agus Bri a horch the uckle, Agus the chorus they in loss.